Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. So in the last part, we just got things started. Um, we found Din, lost Din to Onyx, um, and went and got a sword to visit the Maku Tree. And the Maku Tree told us, hey, uh, go to this gnarled root dungeon and start getting ready for, um, what is it? I guess, and start saving the forces of nature, I believe is what's in this one. So with our key, we can open up this left door and come to a similar room to like the last one uh, that will also require us to take out basically the same amount of enemies. Giving us, I think it's the map? Yep, the dungeon map. The darkened rooms are the ones we haven't been to yet. Well, head north, and we actually unlock uh, an interesting mode of travel for um, these one, these Zelda games, and it's the minecart. You can change its path with the little blue switches you saw up top there, and it's just another way you can. Well, it's the only way you can travel between some of these rooms. You can push that block to open the next path. And our goal is that treasure chest. So, let's take a close look at what we've got to work with. And see if there's a specific push pattern we could use. There is, and it's very close to the one I just took. So, if you take advantage of it first, you can just push right through here. Much easier than any other methods to dig through, and it's just a Gasha seed, but it's one item off the list of things in this map. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. So, now that we've gotten that first part done, let's head up to the top route. We can switch the path of those, as well as it won't open from this side. Which, I find that's a bit weird. Just let me open the chest from whichever side I can reach it. It's fine. If I can get to one of its sides, it's very unlikely you made it that I can't get to the other right away. But I guess it stops you from opening a chest from above, and that might be the, the big reason it was there. Oh, we'll head across. Making sure to kill as many of these bats as we can. Just because the bats themselves really bug me. And we can get... And bombs. So we now have bombs to open up additional paths. Such as this one right here, hidden up on this top wall area. But we'll come back to that one. I believe that needs a key, which is what's over here. That's why you keep hearing it ding every time we come by. That's the uh, a feature of the compasses in this game. They make a nice little ding when um, there's a small key in the area. So back the way we came, so you had to pick up the bombs. They are required and they're pretty close to the final target anyways. So. Gotta deal with these blade traps that do quite a bit of damage for this early in the game. But I think this one... Oh, no, it's not that one. See, I know there's one nearby that is a fairy, guaranteed. So you would always be able to heal back up, even if you did have bad luck with the blade traps. Not if you've got bad luck with the fairies, though. Yeah, that one didn't even fly back in range. Bull. Where's it gonna put? It puts you right back at the entrance. Fortunately, we weren't too, too far into it. We were literally just, you head in, make a left, slay everything in the room. So blade traps are gonna be something we will have to worry about. I think basically every time we play through this area. Because really, they do a lot of damage. We only have three hearts. 
though, you get hit six times and you're dead. Which, six times is a lot, but six times from basically anything. And they are not super generous with the hearts, uh, like some of the later games have been. I know in A Link Between Worlds, uh, I didn't die too, too frequently, and it gave you lots of hearts, lots of heart pieces. We've seen one so far, but no way that we've seen enough to even get an extra heart container yet, seeing as we're still in the first area. Yeah, look at that one. I swung my sword, I should have been at a far enough distance. It still got me. It took damage. Alright, so four hits going back into this room. Gonna be definitely take advantage of these little side paths that they give you. If at all possible. Oh sure, this time the fairy was nice and was like, oh yeah, I'll hang out with you. Growl, you cannot pass. And we are up against a red minotaur and a blue minotaur. So we're just gonna focus down the red one, see what we can do damage-wise to it. Looks like they attack towards you. All right, the red one's down. Oh, and they have a shared health bar. Yeah, we were one room away from the um, health, like from the teleport point. So fortunately, we won't have to make that trip through that room again. I think I have to push this from the bottom. Yeah, we can drop down and we can get this new item, this bag. It is a seed satchel. It has 20 ember seeds. And it's going to be a very helpful uh, item for us. Uh, it makes you go out the same way you came in, in or close enough. So, similar to some of the older Link, the older Zelda games, the Seed Satchel will give us access to basically. Fire. To explain it simply, easiest way for us to pick up fire or be able to burn things. I'm sure there may be a fire rod or something similar. I think it was a magic rod in Link's Awakening uh, that you could use. We got the boss key. However, we are still missing, well, the key. And you can see the minecart isn't back. Even though we... Oh. Okay, come on off. Even though we've made it back here, the minecart has not. So that is something you do have to worry about in these ones as well, that... The minecart just won't come back with you when you use the little portal. We could teleport back that way, but I think it'll be better for us to simply explore some more. I don't think we need the... Uh, Oh, what do you have to say, old man? <clears throat> Return light to unlit torches. And we're gonna follow that. We have seen one other set of unlit torches so far, right up here. Because taking out these guys, in fact, does not open the next room. It opens the way back and drops a key. Lighting the torches gives us access to here. We have to worry about these hands. If they catch you, which I think that one was a bit cheap, it shouldn't have caught me there, uh, they will send you back to the beginning of the dungeon. It's our second time at the beginning, but the dungeon itself is pretty short. And you can see the enemies stayed dead. At least these ones did. These hands were not as lucky about it. If you can keep them all just so they're only coming from a single way, it's a little easier to deal with them. And once you've got it to that point, now no more hands are going to be spawning in this area. We've got another ring. Uh, we can get that appraised by Vazu for 20 rupees later. 
I will not be going for all the rings. Uh, we have to go with the top path. Unfortunately, this room has a different enemy pool. So we have to worry about Ball Masters once again. There is a fairy in the first bush here, apparently. I don't know if that's a random chance and I got lucky or what, but head out the top and we are in the boss room against the, the dragon unicorn, which you want to just kind of hang up above him because his horn is his weakness and he goes down that quickly. We got a heart container. We are going to be going for full hearts at least because uh, we, we're going to need it, if you didn't notice from this first um, area alone. If we were trying a three heart run, we would have failed. You got the fertile soil, an essence of nature. Seeds scattered across the bountiful lands are nourished in this fertile soil. And, thanks to the fertile soil, the Maku tree has gained a little more power, enough to give us a little more information. It's me, the Maku tree. Some of the fertile soil has come to me. Do I already feel stronger. In my dreams, I saw the Temple of Seasons in a strange land I do not know. There I saw a precious item that will aid you. That is all I can see now. Oh. Another useful thing that's gonna happen, if you've killed, I believe it's something like 30 enemies or 15 enemies, it will spawn Maple. And Maple, once you crash into her, will drop a bunch of items. Watch where you're going. You just hit Maple, the Great Witch Syrup's Apprentice. Maple Syrup, yes. Thanks to you, all the stuff fell out of my bag. The Great ba Witch will be mad. Can't find any Lawn Lawn eggs, and now this. Just take the stuff you dropped too. Finders Keepers. And she says that, but... Unfortunately, if the ring was closer to us, we could have gotten that, but um, there was no luck this time. We also can head up here, and if you torch this bush, we get a nice staircase heading down. Two? Don't tell. So I'm, I've already broken his rule by immediately telling you guys. And he gives us 100 rupees. But... I think it's more important that we now have a few more scent seeds, too. But yeah, so Maple is looking for a Lawn Lawn Egg. If we can find one of those, it'll be worth it to run into her once more. And the Gasha Seed we planted grew into a Gasha Nut. Check what's inside. A ring was inside. There's only a few places that it's actually going to be worth it for me to go out of my way to get the Gasha Seed. We also want to burn this tree down to pick up the piece of heart. Collect four and all to get an extra heart container. Check on them in the subscreen. I think there's only eight or twelve of those total, so I'm not super worried. And like, I want to get to that chest, but we can't do it in this season, so we'll have to come back later. Instead, hello Vazu. Do come in. Welcome to Vazu Jewelers. What can I do? We're gonna get our two rings appraised, but the one we got in the dungeon is the Discovery Ring, since Soft Earth. Not too, too useful. And then the one from the bush is the Cursed Ring. Half sword damage and damage taken doubles. We don't want either of these rings, unfortunately. The Soft Soil one is useful, but it's too early in the game for me to get the items I want out of these. Because the big benefit that it has is there is a heart piece, I believe, buried in one of them. We want to pick up the shield. <laughs> Wooden shield, 30 rupees. And it's just going to be another useful item for later. With the shield, we can continue forward. And, well, we actually have to head over to the right here. Which you would find out... Literally by walking up to, hey, these are burnable. <coughs> Wait, young traveler. I'm a wandering prophet, Sakra. <coughs> oh, ow, my throat. Ah, I feel it. Spring, summer, and autumn, winter. 
The four spirits are calling you. Make no mistake, the Temple of Seasons is still hidden in this world. If you can find the temple, then pay a visit to the spirits who live there. Surely they can help. Farewell. And he passes back out. I'm gonna burn both these trees. And I guess this is our next area. Good old cameo from the windmill guy. And I think this is a good point to leave it off at. Thank you guys for watching, and in the next part, we get to see what's so horrible about a temple. See you guys then.